to involve people where they are to stop trafficking and slavery where they live so they can say, not in my town. Heritage of Truth. We have a guest today. We have Dylan Burris and um, Charles Powell, and they have written a very powerful book that we want to share with you today. It's called Not in My Town. You want to show them the book cover? Not in My Town, and the subtitle Exposing and Ending Human Trafficking in Modern Day Slavery. Modern Day Slavery? Yes, yeah, slavery does still happen in our world. According to some estimates, as many as 30 million people around the world are held against their will, and many of those here in the United States. It's unbelievable to think that there is yet to be a day in the history of America that has been completely slave-free. And according to the latest statistics by our government, as many as 18,000 people per year are trafficked into the United States for some form of forced labor or exploitation. Wow. I thought that happened mostly in other countries, but it happens here. Well, that was really the, my introduction to it because I thought, well, maybe it happens somewhere else, but certainly not in our country. In 2009, I had the opportunity to serve on a mission trip to Haiti where I saw child labor and child forced labor for the first time, and it, it just irked me to no end, and I thought something must be done. Came back to the United States, started to speak out about the issue, doing more research, and discovered that, in fact, Human trafficking is continuing to take place in the United States, in cities large and small, in nearby Atlanta, Georgia, in Orlando, Florida, in Las Vegas, Nevada, all across our country. And many people don't know anything about it, and if they do, they don't know what to do to respond. Yes. Um, I live in an area where there are a lot of migrant workers, and we have, um, we've had, uh, I have a friend who works with the uh, uh, police force, and uh, she has often, you know, pointed out you know, people getting out of the same van, going into a nail salon, getting back in the same van, bringing their lunch. Some things that she has been taught to look for when there is possibly, you know, some slavery going on. So that would be, um, I want to hear about that a little bit, but uh, you, may, you may have some ideas of ways that we can get more involved. But um, tell me how, how you got involved. I mean, you did some undercover work and some yes, things like that. Yes. Well, my, my history, uh, I was undercover in the war on drugs in the 1980s. I was a bodyguard for royalty, a lot of wow. dangerous jobs. Of course, back then I had a six pack instead of the 24 pack <laughs> I carry today. I was in very good shape. But uh, uh, I uh, worked a lot of dangerous jobs, got a lot of training. And, um, you know, there came a point in time when uh, God opened the door and an opportunity for me to take all the training the government and private organizations gave me and to use it for something that I believed in. You know, my whole life I've been a uh, civil rights activist, I've been a social justice uh, activist, uh, meaning, meaning that I care about the least of these, you know. Yes. There are a lot of people that have the wrong definitions of words like social justice, different television commentators. It doesn't mean you're a socialist. It's a part of a great Christian heritage, which means we care for the least of these. Exactly. And that's what slaves are, they're the very least. Yes. I was active with uh, Chuck Colson and the Centurions program, and you know, he gives the Wilber William Wilberforce Award every yes. year. Um, you know, it, it had so much to do with slavery, and right. I, so I'm really glad to hear hear that. And um, we, you know, remember that is part of our Christian heritage. It is. It's well, something that Jesus was very involved. In. Yes, yeah, so Wilberforce is a perfect example of someone who lived out his faith among the ideas of his day. He served in Parliament. He was working within the government's laws, and he said, this is something that's not right that needs to be changed. Well, it was a long road to see that happen, but he was willing to make that risk, willing to take that effort, and over time, he did see a difference made. And that's the thing that we need to encourage people today, is that yes, your one voice, your single solitary voice that you think means nothing, if you persist on an issue that God has called you to do something about, you will make a significant difference. That's what we are experiencing, not just in our own lives, but as we talk to people who are working to fight slavery where they are in the U.S. and beyond, if one person, one pastor, one parent, one teacher, one child says we want to do something to stop slavery and they are dedicated to doing it, they are saving lives, literally saving lives, day by day across our world. And 
he's talking about people using their various skills and giftings uh, for this cause. You know, very few people have giftings and skills and training to go undercover. And I want to make it very clear, don't go undercover uh, unless, uh, unless you have an awful lot of training and an awful lot of backup. But um, uh, that's, that's what we've done. Dylan has a lot of experience in research and in writing. And, and I'm a writer and I have experience in undercover and other police investigations and what have you. And so um, that's one of the things that, that we did. And we made a major discovery along the way that, you know, two things that are, that are that two great truths that you don't hear much in books or in television today about human trafficking. Number one, we discovered that for the most part, the Christian evangelical, evangelical church in America is peacefully coexisting with human trafficking right under their nose every day. Oh my goodness. And then the other thing we discovered was that organized crime is one of the major reasons why uh, human trafficking is flourishing in the United States. And uh, we back that up in our book with an awful lot of information. What does human trafficking look like? I mean, how would I recognize it? You say it's happening right under our noses. Well, let's talk about the spas and massage parlors. Okay. Now, we, we think about a legitimate day spa that women go to, you know, and, and there are these places. And, you know, I'm a big believer in legitimate massage. It's been a great help to me in my life with, with uh, some of the injuries I've had, physical therapy and massage and what have you. But the kind of places we're talking about are the kind of places that are open from 10 a.m. to 2 in the morning. The kind of places that have billboards that promote women in scantily clad clothing, you know. Yes. Uh, we, we are talking about places that advertise in the back of these entertainment magazines and, and they'll talk about brand new staff, you know. Well, what happened to the other 10 women that were working here? Where are they now? You know, so many of these things point to uh, human trafficking. Uh, inside the place, what I'm looking for when I go in a massage parlor undercover, I'm looking for, does it, look, does it appear that the women live there? Does it, do they cook there? Um, uh, are there any law enforcement reports of like these vans? You talked about these vans. You know, it's very, very common for these vans to pull up on a, on a particular night at midnight when no one's looking and offload 10 girls and then take the 10 girls working there now and put them on the van and take them somewhere else. And they take them across state lines, and we got this backed up in the book from a human trafficking survivor by the name of Chong Kim, who told us that she was forcibly taken by international criminal organization to, to Las Vegas from her home then in Tulsa. And she was trafficked all across the United States, in and out of massage parlors and hotels, as a prostitute against her will. Wow. Yeah, that's the only thing I have really known uh, about human trafficking other than just a few things my friend told me until I start, until I picked up the book was what I see on the crime shows on TV, you know, rescuing the women out of the back of a van or locked up somewhere. But um, your book has a lot of technical information in the front. I had to, I felt like I was kind of weeding through some statistics and some definitions. And at the same time, I was thinking, where are the stories, where are the stories? But at the same time, I really needed to know that, to understand what human trafficking is. And, um, you know, you give a lot of information at the beginning about organizations. And um, is there anything you'd like to say right. about that? Well, we or? want people to understand from the front that we have done our homework. We didn't yes, just did. jump in a car and decide, let's go out and save yeah. some people. Yes. We did some research, saw what other people are doing and what other people are not doing. And one thing that disturbed me personally is to see that many of the organizations that are seeking to fight human trafficking, specifically in our country, are not Christian organizations. They're just human um, social groups of various kinds, civic groups, but they're not known as Christian groups. Well, my vision is in years ahead, say five or ten years from now, when people think, who is doing something to stop slavery in our country today? That the first people that would come to mind would be Christians, people who love Jesus, who are out there trying to do something to make a difference among the least of these, including those in human slavery. And if that happens, mission complete. But another way to put it is where can you make a difference where you live? Most of the people listening to the show are involved in some kind of church locally. What if every church had a ministry specifically to help fight slavery in their community and worldwide? We're not trying to build up a big organization. We're right. trying to involve people where they are to stop trafficking and slavery where they live so they can say, not in my town, which is the goal of the book, and to help neighboring communities and our entire nation to one day be able to say, not in my town on this issue of slavery and human trafficking. So how can, we, how can we do that? How can we inform ourselves or what is it that we could do? 
Well, there are a lot of ways. In our book, we don't just talk about the problem. That'd be very depressing if we right. left it at that. But the final chapters talk about different ideas that you can do as an individual to help. And we encourage people to not do everything, but to do something. To start with the skills that you have as a writer, I started with writing and speaking out about the topic. If you're a musician, you can do something through that. If you lead a woman's group at your church, you can let the people know, find a local organization that serves this type of issue, and get involved, whether it's giving, whether it's serving and volunteering your time, and a myriad of other ways. For people who just want some help, they can email us through mercymovement.com or contact us there at mercymovement.com and we will connect you with the best local organizations we know of where you can get involved personally and make a difference because what matters is you helping one person and that one person who's helped helping another person. When we talked to the survivor in our book, Chong Kim, you know, when her life was changed, she felt this compelling need to not stop with, yes, I'm a survivor now, but to go and help other survivors and to use her story of pain to help release others from their pain. You know, so many people want to go on mission trips and want to do something really significant uh, in their life that, or something that they would consider to be significant. But you're telling us that those opportunities are right here, possibly next door. Well, they so, certainly are. I mean, I live in the state of Tennessee, and in the past two years, 85% of the counties in Tennessee have had at least one report of sex trafficking taking place. Now, you think it only happens in the major cities, perhaps? That is not true at all. That is not an accurate picture of what it looks like today in America. So find out what's happening in your area. Contact us if you need more information. One of the most saddening things is when I can go into a community and do a seminar on human trafficking, and I can type in their zip code into some of the locations where these things take place and find a spot where it's happening within walking distance of where we're standing. Oh. or within a close drive of where they are. And people yes. finally say, it's happening in my town. I can't let this happen anymore. And speaking of the church and their response, oftentimes when I go into a community for a speaking engagement on this topic, I'll go a day early, uh, and they don't really know that I'm there a day early, and I look around, and if I find glaring, uh, glaring prostitution or some, some very high percentage of, well, I suspect human trafficking is there for these reasons. I will document them and when I go and speak at the church, I'll show them a PowerPoint of their local community and I'll show them what they've been driving past. And I get one of two responses. Either I get people who are shocked and upset and want to do something about it. I also get those responses from people where they're upset at me for letting them know about it because now they're responsible for that information. So the website that we might could look to, first of all, is Yes, Mercy. the place to go to, mercymovement.com. That's the organization name where you can find out more and contact us directly. But if you want to know more specifically about the book and the resources and the DVD involved with the book, please go to notinmytown.net. That's notinmytown.net. And it has the resources from the DVD, some clips there you can watch, excerpts from the book. And you can use this not only for yourself, but in a small group of some kind, or perhaps your entire church to equip your church to do something about slavery starting where you yeah. live. And the DVD is very, very helpful for that purpose. Uh, uh, the DVD is very educational, and one of the things we did with the DVD was we, we just we wanted it to be such that people could see this and it could make them start having an awakening about what's going on in their community. Uh, in in one, one case, uh, Lynn Latham, who's in the book, A Woman in Orlando, uh, she's been fighting against human trafficking on the streets, pimp forced prostitution, for many years and she started out by just observing it and and then she would go to God in prayer and she would say God look at that you need to send somebody to take care of that you know and she started out as God you need to do something about it and slowly and slowly and she kept saying God why aren't you sending anybody and finally you know she she felt back from God God saying I, I do have somebody I sent you and she went from the person who was there that wasn't involved who saw the problem over a period of time, she became the person who intervened, and then she became the person who would literally go and make an appointment to go pick these women up in the parking lot, you know, somewhere, and whisk them away and get them to a place of safety and healing. And many women today are living a different life because she was willing to see a problem, seek help from God, and then get involved herself. Thank you so much. That is encouraging. I think the first thing we do need to do is just be informed and be aware of that. And you have certainly brought this to my attention, and uh, I appreciate that. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's a pleasure. Well, I just really appreciate you being here. For believers to men.